An illegal sex industry with ties to human trafficking is still thriving in Colorado Springs tonight. Nearly two years after 13 investigates first exposed the problem, online reviews suggest as many as 34 illicit massage parlors continue operating in the city. And even after a spa's busted for prostitution, it's not long before the doors are back open again. Cardio News Channel 13 investigative reporter Chelsea Brinsel continues our hiding in plain sight investigation. In nearly three dozen Greater Colorado Springs shopping centers, Asian women are working at massage parlors. Those parlors a front for an illegal sex industry. The El Paso County District Attorney, Southern Colorado's Human Trafficking Task Force, state lawmakers, and the Colorado Springs City Council are all well aware of the issue 13 Investigates has continued to report on for the last two years. Those people are in fact victims. They are um, often very tightly controlled as to their movements and what they can and can't do. They've been abused for a long time. Um, they don't know anything else. A modern form of slavery. It, uh, they are obviously very trapped and uh, we need to get them help. We need to make sure they have a way out. 13 investigates reporting on the issue has resulted in Colorado Springs police changing how they investigate these illicit spas. In December 2020, those changes resulted in the arrest of this spa owner, CNCI. Charged with keeping a house of prostitution, pimping, and money laundering. Seriously, are you forcing these women to have sex with men here? Can these women leave? Are you going to shut down? You have nothing to say. Despite the seriousness of the charges against him and the fact that investigators identified the women working inside as victims, we found that CNCI opened up both of the spas where he is accused of committing those crimes the very day he bailed out of jail. The spa had already been busted for prostitution years before, according to police, and was able to keep operating. It's been frustrating for nearby business owners. It seems like no matter what we do, it's almost like the next day they just have free reign to open up again. And these poor girls. After the two encounters with 13 investigates, the owner closed both spas. Rose Spa remains closed, but eventually the accused pimp reopened Energy Day Spa on North Carefree Drive, which is still advertising on a website, Skip the Games, for cash-only massages with young and beautiful massage technicians. What kind of message does that send to the women who are working inside that that this just gets to keep happening. Yeah, no, it's not a good message at all. And uh, I feel really feel for them. And I uh, hope that they have the ability to escape what they're uh, being forced to do in many cases. City Council President Richard Scorman tells me it's been challenging to crack down on the 34 illicit spas still operating during the pandemic. He says the health risks make it tough for undercover police operations inside the spas. What do you think about the progress we've been able to make in the last two years, even before COVID-19? Well, we're doing our best. The Colorado Springs City Code includes a public nuisance ordinance that officials like Council President Richard Scorman touted they would use to stop the spas back in 2019. It allows the city to initiate the abatement process to shut down a business after two instances of pimping or prostitution. But Mayor John Souther's office told us in December 2020 that the ordinance has never been enforced in city history, adding it was a long, complex process. If we're serious about helping victims, then we walk those long roads, we take all the twists and turns, and we do something about it. So for our city officials, my challenge would be Let's take it seriously. Let's do something about this. Julie Bellar, the chair of the Southern Colorado Human Trafficking Task Force, says solving the problem may best happen through a statewide approach. It has to be, in my opinion, um, something that covers the state so that they don't just get to shift around and say, oh, well, this county hasn't done it yet, so we'll just move there. If not everybody is working together and unified, then we're not going to be able to solve this issue. El Paso exactly. County District right. Attorney right. Michael Allen says he wants exactly. to tackle the issue with tools in the criminal justice system. I think a grand jury um, proceedings would potentially be good. We have the Colorado Organized Crime Act that we can potentially use against some of these um, massage parlors if we have the evidence to do that. But until meaningful action or a solution comes, there's little if any hope for the women working inside illicit massage parlors. Reporting in Colorado Springs, Chelsea Brentzel, 
13 investigates. Well, Colorado Springs City Council President Richard Scorman tells 13 Investigates he's working on setting up a public meeting or work session on the topic in the next few weeks. Colorado Springs Representative Terry Carver says she is working with others to close those loopholes and shut down illicit spas, something that will be a 2022 legislative priority.